Welcome to Electro Online. Now our next example is a spring with a mass attached to it and the spring is attached to the ceiling. So here we have a spring that's simply resting under its own mass and it, let's assume we can ignore its own mass so that it extends to a certain distance right here and then when we attach a small mass to it, it'll cause the spring to elongate at distance x1. Then when we attach an additional mass to that, and of course we need to have, maybe we'll use some strong glue between the two here, then you can see the spring will then elongate even more. Now sometimes the problem is worded in such a way that the additional distance, let's call it x2, is three times the original distance x1, or sometimes it may be expressed in terms of the total distance of elongation now is three times the initial distance x1. So in either case, we're trying to find the value of m in terms of the small value, small m, when x2 is equal to 3 times x1 or when x3 is equal to 3 times x1. So it depends how the problem is worded. So let's go ahead and start over, over here with this situation right there and figure out how do we approach that. Well, in each case, when we attach a mass to it, the small mass or the combination of the small mass and big mass, the spring will elongate to a certain distance and then it'll be motionless there. So in other words, in all circumstances, after we finish hanging mass on the spring and things come to a, to a stop, to a standstill, then there will be no acceleration. So here we can say A equals zero and here we can say A equals zero. And if the acceleration is equal to zero, then we know that the net force must also be zero because the net force is always equal to ma and if a is equal to zero then the net force must also equal zero and that will be the case in both situations. So let's first attack situation number one, let's then attack situation number two and let's now attack then uh, uh, situation number three. All right, so let's start with number one. So we can say that f net is going to be equal to zero and so all the forces pulling up will be the force of the spring which will be k times x1 and all the forces pulling down will be the weight of the block mg and so that will be equal to zero so this means that if we move this to the other side we have mg is equal to kx simply we can move the other side becomes positive switch the equation around so m will be equal to kx divided by g so that will be the value of the small mass in terms of the spring constant, the distance elongated in g, and since we call the distance x1, we might as well keep calling it x1 right there. Now we'll go to situation number two. In situation number two, we now have the additional mass, and now we have the additional elongation. So now we can say that the force pulling up will now be k times, and will be the total distance x1 plus x2, be x1 plus x2, and minus the force pulling down, which is the sum of the two masses, m plus big M, times g, and that has to equal zero. And let me put a line over here so we don't get confused. All right, so net force equals zero, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the value for big M. We're trying to solve for this here. So we're going to move that to the other side, turn the equation around. So that gives us little m plus big M times g is equal to k times x1 plus x2. So first we're going to multiply this out and then x2 is equal to 3 times x1. We'll replace that. So we have little mg plus big mg is equal to k times x1 plus 3x1 because the additional distance x2 is three times the initial distance x1. Since we're looking for big M, we're going to move this to the other side. So we have big Mg is equal to, uh, let's see here, that would be k times 4x1 minus little mg. But little mg can be expressed as k times x1. So when we have this right here, little mg is equal to kx1, so I can do that here. So I have big mg is equal to 4kx1 minus mg is a 1kx1. That means that the mass is equal to 3kx1 
divided by g. And since kx1 is equal to mg, 3kx1 is equal to 3mg, so this is equal to 3mg divided by g. And then the g's cancel out, and so finally I can say that the big mass is equal to 3 times the small mass in our second situation. Now let's attack our third situation. Let's say it was worded in such a way that the total distance x3 is equal to 3 times the initial distance x1. So we attack it the very same way. We can then say for number 3, we can say that the force pulling up is going to be equal to k times the total distance here, which is x3, minus the force pulling down, which is the sum of the two masses, times acceleration to gravity, which is the weight of the two blocks. That is equal to zero again, because there's no acceleration, so therefore there's no net force. And, let's see here, m plus m. Notice that I'm trying to solve for big M, so I'm going to move this to the other side and move the equation around. So we have m plus big M times g is equal to kx3. Then I'm going to separate this two, and x3 is equal to 3 times x1. So we have big mg plus little mg is equal to k times 3x1 instead of x3. Then move this across over here. We have big mg is equal to 3kx1 minus mg. And again, mg is a kx1, so big mg is equal to 3kx1 minus kx1, which means that big mg is equal to 2kx1. And since kx1 is equal to mg, we can say that mg is equal to 2 times little mg. And since the g's cancel out, we can say that big M is equal to 2 times small m. So depending upon how the, how the problem is worded, if they say that the additional mass causes additional extension and the additional extension is three times the original extension, or if the extra mass causes an extension of the spring that's three times the original extension, the total extension, notice you'll get two separate answers. So a lot has to be, has to be said about how exactly the problem is worded. But this gives you, again, a very good idea of how to attack such a situation. If the problem is static and the acceleration is zero, that means the net force must equal zero. And the net force equals zero simply means you add up all the forces acting on the object set equal to zero. Again, all the forces acting on the object set equal to zero. Here again, set equal to zero. And you solve for what you're looking for. That's how it's done.